Hey folks, Ray from DCAmerica.com here. Today we've got the new Garmin Edge 520 Plus. Uh, now this unit is priced only 30 bucks higher than the existing Garmin Edge 520 was at 279 bucks, but it has a whole pile of new features, uh, or at least uh, a big new feature, which is maps. Uh, now this is not the only new Garmin product that was announced today. They also announced the new Edge 130, which is really darn impressive. It's a tiny little thing. I mean, you can see it's very, very small, um, but it also has like power meter capability and, and lots of cool features there, as well as a new radar and light combo. That's the RTL 510. Uh, so this is basically taking their existing radar unit they have for cycling and their existing light and squishing them together into one. But this video is not about that. Uh, the other videos up in the corner are about that. Instead, it's all about the 520 plus. Now you may be wondering right now what is different between the 520 and the 520 plus or for that matter even the 1030 or the 820. After all if you were to go simply blend these two units together the 820 and the 520 you would pretty much end up with the 520. But it's not quite that simple. And in fact, you'll see a lot of publications today that'll probably try to say it's either just the 520 plus maps or it is the uh, 1030 and 820 minus some stuff. And that's kind of true, but not really. There's actually a lot of nuance to it. And I'm gonna dive into all that nuance right now in my full review. But let's start with the obvious. Uh, the first one is that it does look like the 520. Uh, now this is a 520, this is a 520 plus, this is white, this is black, uh, but the button layout is exactly the same. They essentially took the shell of the 520 and plopped this inside of it and called it the 520 plus. But it's now two grams heavier. Uh, so that is three M&Ms, by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, worth of weight. So it's really uh, very trivial, not, not peanut M&Ms, just regular M&Ms uh, to make it heavier. And what is probably costing that additional weight is the storage inside of this now. Uh, that's because it now has storage for maps. So in the past, you had a very, very small amount of storage that you could put some maps on here if you like hacked in it. It was never supported by Garmin, but versus this with the 520 Plus, now it allows you to have full map sets on there for wherever you are in the world and to go ahead and route on those map sets. And routing is the most important piece. That allows you to get turn by turn navigation, turn left on Maple Street, right on Elm Street, and whatever other streets you've got, um, as well as to route to a given destination. Uh, so for example, if I'm out riding in the countryside and I just want to go back home, um, it'll automatically route me back home, not by just following a little breadcrumb trail, but actually by giving me turn by turn directions to that home point in the fastest possible manner, regardless of how I got there. Um, so that's really what you're looking for. But there are some core differences between that and something like the 1030 or the 820. First off and most importantly, is that with, while this has a full map set on it, this one also has the point of interest database and the address set capabilities. This does not. So that means you cannot on the new 520 plus go ahead and simply put in one Elm Street in Missouri and find that address. This can't do that. This one can. Um, so if that matters to you, then the new 520 plus is probably not your best bet. The second thing is it does not have a point of interest database, which means that if you're looking for the nearest restaurant or gas station or hotel or whatever it may be, a convenience store to get Gatorade or something, this can't do that either. You're going to, have to pull out your phone to do that, whereas this can actually show you that information. With the 520 Plus, you have to have a route or course already defined ahead of time. Uh, now you can pull that from the Garmin Connect app, so you can basically just send that and create that in the Garmin Connect app, Garmin Connect mobile app on your phone, straight to the device. You can do Strava routes as well, so I can use the Strava Connect IQ app on this, and that's what I've been using for the last couple of weeks, is I just have routes in Strava, and I just wirelessly transmit them, put them on this. It takes a couple seconds, and I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, at that point, it'll route out turn by turn navigation on this natively. Now there are three other things that the 520 does not have, this new 520 Plus does. Uh, the first off is the ability to have rider to rider messaging. So that was introduced on the 1030 that allowed you to go ahead and basically message from one person to another person, um, assuming they had another Edge 1030 device, which was like nobody at the time. Uh, now they're a bit more common, uh, but now if another person have this, you can send these quick little messages back and forth. They're all pre-canned messages. And you know, a lot of people are like, oh, that sounds dangerous or whatever, uh, whatever. If, if you think that's dangerous, then pull off the side of the road, but you can quickly glance at that and just give a quick response back like, hey, I'm almost there or whatever the case may be to your friends or wait up, um, you know, somebody had a flat, all that kind of stuff. And you don't have to like stop and they can see that and just confirm back, okay, real quick. Uh, super, super easy stuff. And it worked pretty well for me on the 1030. I haven't had a chance to try it here on the 520 plus for the very simple reason that I lack enough friends that have 1030s or 520 pluses here in Amsterdam. So once that happens, I will go ahead and uh, talk more about that down the road. But until then, I'll have to look back at the past, the 1030, and it worked pretty darn well there. 
The next thing is the 520 Plus also gets the new Strava segments enhanced features. So that came actually with the 1030 last summer and it wasn't really talked a lot about, uh, but essentially Garmin updated the way they handle Strava segments to make it more accurate as you're going along. Uh, and the 1030 got that, but a lot of older devices didn't. So this now has that capability. And then finally it gets two new Connect IQ apps. One is a Trail Forks app that will come to all the capable Connect IQ Edge devices. So 520, 520 Plus, 8, 20, 10, 30, and so on. Now there is one notable thing that is missing from the Edge 520 Plus that was seen on the 1030 uh, Plus and even on the new 130 that's announced and really pretty much every other Garmin device um, that's been shipping or announced in the last uh, 15 months since January of 2017, which is Bluetooth Smart Sensor Support. Because this is using the old hardware of the 520, uh, that's not here, unfortunately. That's kind of a bit of a bummer and a big gap. And that's sort of the problem with Garmin reusing the hardware all the time is that when you have these sort of jumps like this, the new hardware doesn't get that. On the flip side, the vast majority of sensors out there today are dual AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart. So it really only matters if you have like polar sensors, which are pretty much the only ones in the market uh, that are straight up Bluetooth Smart only. So now what we'll do is we'll do a quick walkthrough of the unit itself, just walking through kind of some of the menus and stuff so you can see what it looks like. Uh, it's really basically just identical to an Edge 520, uh, just with a couple extra features around mapping. So let's talk about that real quick. Okay, so here we are on the Edge 520 Plus, and now you'll see that it doesn't really look all that different from regular Edge 520. It's got the same buttons and everything else. It's just simply this color scheme. Uh, so that's actually the quickest way you can see it from a distance, but on the actual menus and stuff, it's, it's virtually identical. Um, now, if I were to go ahead and just simply start a ride here just really quick, uh, you'll notice that there is a map screen now. Uh, in the past, you did have a map screen, but not quite the level of detail that you'd see here. Uh, now this is zoomed out quite a bit, so you won't see quite all the roads that we'll see in just a second when I get into a given map, uh, but just kind of show you that is does exist there. That's really the quickest way you can notice there's a difference on the software itself. The next piece is when you get into the actual loading of the routes. So if we go down here to menu, um, there's a couple ways you can do this. One is I can pull them from the navigation menu up here. So if I went up to navigation, I could have courses there, uh, and there's some courses that I've sent over. So this one right here, the uh, cycling April 17th course I just sent over from Garmin Connect Mobile using their Trendline popularity routing piece. So I basically told it to give me a 20-ish mile course from the point I'm standing at right now. Uh, and if I go ahead and click that open, I can then look at the map of that course itself. Um, and just like any other course that you would have seen in the past, uh, and then it shows me this location right there and back around again. Um, but that's actually not how I tend to do courses. Instead, uh, what I use is the Strava Connect IQ app. So I go down here to Connect IQ, open that up, and then you see the different Connect IQ apps. Training Peaks, you saw that came about a year ago. Strava last summer for different uh, Garmin devices. Best Bike Split, I think about a year ago as well. Yelp is brand new, we'll talk about that in a second, as well as Trail Forks. Um, so I'll go up here up to Strava Routes, click OK. And then it's gonna load this information from my phone. Okay, now these are the different Strava routes that I have in my account. So Amsterdam River Plus, Quick Amsterdam Ride, and so on. Uh, there's plenty more than there. Um, in order to transfer ride, I just simply click on this one, Quick Amsterdam Ride, just do that. Uh, and then I'll just select it again. And it'll did download it from Strava, it's super quick. And there we go, now it asks which activity profile I wanna use. So these are the ones you pre-set up on your Edge 520 Plus. So you can tweak these, of course, to show different data fields and customization, all that kind of jazz. I'll just choose the default one right there. And then a couple seconds later, it'll hand it over to the course, um, basically portion of the Edge 520. So at this point, Strava's done its thing. It's handed off to the Edge 520. And now I can see the summary for this. So the distance, uh, the speed it might predict I would do it at, the map right there. And you can see it's gonna load that up. Now in this case, this particular device is a North American one. I have my European one in my pocket. So you're not gonna see anything right now because I just loaded a European uh, route onto a North American device. You can go ahead and add maps for different regions beyond the region you bought it in. So there's like a North, or sorry, there's a North American region, there's a European region and so on. Uh, you can do that via third party free maps and whatnot, but it's not actually something that Garmin does natively, which is kind of a pain in the ass to be honest. Um, in any case, there's elevation data as well uh, that will come through here. Uh, you can see it's it's the Netherlands, so it's like a 15 foot scale there, and so everything looks gigantic. Um, but after that, you go down to the bottom here and you would choose, uh, sorry, the top there to ride the route. I do wanna make a note of the settings here. One interesting setting is the always display of the route itself. So I usually turn that on uh, so I can go get that route displayed. Uh, and then from here on out, you're, you're basically routing like normal. Now, since I'm in the US, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that US route that I have instead of my European routes. That way you can see how this actually works. So I'm gonna go back to navigation and just load up one of the local courses I just created right there. You'll notice now that my Strava route is in here. So it's actually imported that Amsterdam route into the courses options there. 
or the courses there. Um, but I'm just going to use this local one here in Kansas I created a little bit ago so I can show you that. You'll see it's the exact same screen we saw before um, within the Strava app or within the Strava handoff there. I'm just going to choose ride though in this case to pull this open and then I'll allow it to navigate me to the beginning of the course. I'll choose yes because it says I'm off course right now and it's going to go ahead and do the calculation of the course itself. Um, so this shouldn't take too long for it to go ahead and pull that up. Uh, it's not, not too bad here. It's been a lot worse in Amsterdam. I talked about that in my navigation video um, because of the density of the cycling data here. Uh, but here there's there's not much around to be honest. Like it's a pretty, sorry, it's kind of fuzzy, there we go. There's just really nothing out here compared to the amount of cycling trails and whatnot. So it's already done actually. Um, and you can see right there, uh, it's giving me a bit of a U-turn and I'm gonna take uh, what is actually, it looks like this trail right over there, that bike path uh, to get out of there. Um, and now you can see the detail a little bit closer. If I go and change, there's my elevation screen. Sorry, pull it out a little bit. Regular data fields, the turns coming up. Uh, and of course I can customize all this uh, pretty easily um, within the data fields and whatnot, which we'll go to in just a second. I can also zoom in and out of the map there. Um, if I go and turn off auto zoom, I can set the zoom level to it. Um, so very, very similar to what you would have seen on like an Edge uh, 820 or 1030, but without the touchscreen side of it. So, you know, I can't just simply like tap on there, I have to use these buttons and whatnot uh, to zoom out. But you can see as I do that, you get more and more data as I go through this. So. That's sort of an overview of the, the mapping portion as, it see, as you see it here. Check out my full navigation video up in the corner there because I actually do this in real time out on the bike. Um, but I just want to show you kind of an overview of things uh, right now as to just standing here in kind of the unit and the UI and, and whatnot. Um, so going into data fields, I want to show this briefly because it's something that's actually a little bit different than the original 520. Um, so I'm going to go down into my activity profiles. So activity profiles and then I can select the uh, race one which you can change these, all these names, you can do whatever you want. And these are basically how you set up data screens. Um, now what's interesting here is a little change they have in data fields. Um, so this screen right here has five fields. I'm gonna change this layout real quick. You'll see now there's 5A and 5B and whatnot, so 4B. Now notice the slight differences between 4A and 4B. Still four fields, but a different arrangement. Um, this is something that's new on the 520 plus. And you go through these here and you can see slightly different arrangements for each one. Last but not least, I want to briefly show you the Yelp app. Um, this is interesting because what this does is it essentially replaces portions of the point of interest database that you're missing from the Edge 820 and 1030. Um, the goal of this is to be able to search out locations near you. Uh, so this is the app here and then it'll go ahead and hand off a course just like Strava would to that location. So you can see active life, beauty and spas, I guess, uh, bicycles, food and so on. So if I go ahead and I select this one right there for bicycles, um, I can see bike renting, bike parking, bike repair. Um, we'll just do bike repair for the fun of it. And then it'll load this up here and show me options around me. Uh, so I can say the Spokes Cafe is 13 miles away or bikes for the like, whatever I want here, I'll choose this. I'll select it, uh, and then uh, this is a beta app. It's not quite working here, but this will basically just give me the route to that and hand it off to the Edge uh, 520 Plus to go ahead and route to, exactly like you just saw with Strava. Um, pretty cool. To show you sort of another app that does something very similar, it was also announced today. Get back here, there we go, Connect IQ, Trail Forks. This is designed really for mountain bikers. So I click here, um, there's nearby routes, and these are all mountain biking routes. It's gonna get the location from GPS here and then it'll pull up the routes that are nearby me. So you can see the uh, Blue River Parkway, uh, Blue River Park and so on. So I'm just gonna choose one of these at random right here. Uh, now again, beta app isn't quite showing the preview, but I can click download there and it'll go ahead and download this full app. Again, just like what you saw with Strava. This is basically just handing things off to the unit. Here's a look, the activity selector uh, and then it's gonna go ahead and load the course in and I can look at it in more detail in just a second when it does that. Um, and that's really what you're seeing a lot of these connect to Q apps do is leveraging what they're good at, which is connecting to third party platforms and service on the internet uh, and then pulling that information down into the device itself uh, where this can go ahead and run that course. Uh, so I can see the map right here, pull this open. Uh, and we'll see exactly where that, that course is. Uh, and it'll show up on the map there. And I can again go and route to this if I wanted to uh, pretty easily as well. Uh, so you can see I'm up here and I can tell it then route to me here. And then we'll just go ahead and uh, select this here. I'm gonna go back, sorry. And we'll go ride and you'll see it'll probably immediately ask, um, would you like to navigate to the start of the course? Yep. And then it'll go and start its calculation process just like it did in the past. So there's a 0% and, and so on to get across town. So that's a quick look at the Edge uh, 520 Plus. Definitely check out the full post down in the description there as well uh, for a lot more like screens and things like that. 
Okay, finally, one kind of interesting feature that uh, I didn't mention earlier that isn't really mentioned anywhere else on Garmin's site is the ability to do an extended display with your Garmin watch. And they may be wondering, what the heck does that mean? Um, well, well, think about Garmin's Varia heads-up display. That was basically the thing you attached to your sunglasses, and you can see device data from your edge or your watch on this heads-up display of sorts that you attach to your glasses. That sounds cool enough, but what if you flip the paradigm around? What if you're a triathlete in a race, and you have your Garmin 4 935 or Phoenix 5 or whatever the heck it may be, and you want to transmit that data to this device on your handlebars? You know, a lot of us do race um, with an additional bike computer on their handlebars in a triathlon, plus the watch on your wrist, uh, just because you like that kind of out in front sort of feel there. But now Garmin has effectively inverted that paradigm a bit. You can now go onto this device, set up as an extended display device for your wearable. Uh, now, some of the details are a bit slim here right now. Um, I kind of got it to work, uh, but it's not quite fully baked. So it's something that I think we'll see soon. So the next question you may be asking is, how does this compare to something like the Wahoo Bolt? Uh, and that's a really good question. The Wahoo Bolt is only 30 bucks cheaper at 249, basically matching what the Edge 520 was as well. And it's tough because, you know, the, the 520 and the Wahoo Bolt like went head to head last year or so on different features, like Garmin would add some, Wahoo would add some back and forth and definitely a competitive thing there. And you may be saying, well, the Wahoo has maps and this has maps, but not really. Wahoo has a base map set that shows the roads you're going on, but it doesn't actually know what roads you're on. It just pre-downloads that information from the mapping provider ahead of time uh, or the route provider ahead of time, and then it gives you those turn by turn directions. But if you go off the route, the Wahoo Bolt can't reroute you. It just simply shows you how to get back to your course, whereas this can actually do rerouting on the roads around you to get you back to your course. So there are different. This definitely has a bigger map set, more information in it than the Wahoo Element does, but there's also reasons why people like the Wahoo Element, perhaps just because it's not Garmin. Um, so whatever the case may be, it's something to consider. I'm gonna do an entire video of that over the next couple of weeks, doing like a, a shootout between the two of them. Uh, there's obviously lots of pros to both of them. They're both great devices. It's really gonna kind of come down to some of the nuances of the features that you want. Uh, but I think obviously at the price point of 279 for this thing with full maps, Garmin's doing pretty much a bit of like an FU uh, to Wahoo on that. Okay, so there you go, a full review of the new Edge 520 Plus. Again, do not forget to check out my in-depth review down in the description there with all the data and goodness and photos and stuff like could not possibly fit into a video without this video taking like an hour and a half. Uh, and don't forget to also check out the posts on uh, the new Varia Radar uh, as well as the 130. And then more importantly, all the other crazy videos I published this week and post I published this week on new stuff coming out of Sea Otter. It's been a crazy big week. Today is Wednesday, if I got my dates right, when you're actually seeing this video, uh, there is more stuff tomorrow and more stuff the next day, like cool, really cool stuff. And there was stuff yesterday, like it's awesome, lots, lots of cool stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like that subscribe button if you found uh, this interesting, as well as the like button. I appreciate it.